Hey, happy weekend, everyone. Um, this is yet another installment of the homework videos, and we are going to be uh, looking today at different cell organelles and their functions. So, um, this past week, we really looked at prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, and uh, we talked about the differences, and prokaryotic cells are bacteria, and we said that eukaryotic cells were plant and animal cells. So, today, we're going to go look at the organelles that are found. Uh, mainly in plant and animal cells, and then we'll look a little bit at which ones of those are found in prokaryotic cells on Monday. So, um, to start off, I want to show you guys just a couple of the models. These are similar to what you guys will be building in your projects this week. Um, so, we have a animal cell and a plant cell. Okay, so you have your animal cell over here and your plant cell here. Okay, as you can see, these guys are circular as opposed to rectangular alright um, we have mostly the same structures um, this one if you look the nucleus is always in the middle okay and then if you look over in the plant cell the nucleus really is off to the side but the nucleus can be anywhere inside of a plant cell if uh, you remember the picture of the onion leaf, you could see the nucleus as a brownish red dot, and you can see that in each cell it's in a different position. So the nucleus really can be anywhere. And then we'll look at see uh, most of the organelles that you'll find between plant and animal cells are the same. However, there are a few that are found only in animals and a few that are found only in plants, and that's what really makes them different. Um, so these are basically the main differences. So we're going to go ahead and go through each of the organelles. So if you can follow through with your notes, I just wanted to make sure you saw what um, what they looked like um, as a whole with all the different pieces in it. Since with the microscope you can only see certain structures, mainly the nucleus. Um, and in the LEDA, all the little circles inside the cells that you saw were chloroplasts. All right, so here we go. Cell membrane, first one, it's going to surround the cell and allows all the molecules to move in and out of the cell. We're going to hit the cell membrane really hard at the end of this unit um, because the whole last part of the unit is cell transport and that means things moving in and out of the cell. So it means different waste materials, different things the cell needs and it needs a way to move in and out and that's what the cell membrane does. Okay, so cell membranes are found in both plant and animal cells. Okay. Next we got the cell wall. All right, the cell wall is going to provide support and protection to plant cells. Okay, so these are only found in plants. Okay, and the cell wall really allows um, plants to stand up. Okay, without that cell wall, they would be squishy and able to move around just like animal cells are, and plants wouldn't be able to grow up. So the reason plants can grow up on their stems is mainly because of this cell wall. It provides a lot of support. It's made out of something called cellulose. And cellulose is a sugar. All right, so it's a carbohydrate. Um, so if you look, this part, this green, is gonna be your cell wall. Then this little part right in here this tan part that I'm coloring white this is your cell membrane okay so plants actually have both cell walls and cell membranes and the cell membranes found on the inside of the cell wall alright next we have the cytoplasm cytoplasm is definitely also found in both plant and animal cells and this is just a jelly like substance that is found inside the cell and it acts as a cushion so think of you know bits of fruit inside jello that's really what happens in the cytoplasm all right you have all your organelles that are just inside this jelly and it cushions them and as the cells move or get knocked into the organelles don't get damaged so it's more of protection and it acts like a cushion all right here we go nucleus all right the nucleus this is the control center of the cell and it contains the dna there are nucleuses found in both plant and animal cells. Remember, in animal cells, it's always found in the center of the cell. You saw that really well in the picture of the cheek cell. And in a plant cell, the nucleus can be found anywhere inside the cell. All right, so those are things you have to keep in mind when you're making your models. You want to make sure when you're making your animal model, the uh, nucleus is found in the middle. All right, and then in a plant cell, you can put your nucleus wherever you want. Um, the nucleus does have openings called pores 
all right and that allows DNA to move in and out well not DNA DNA has to stay in the nucleus it allows a molecule called RNA to move out um, you don't have to know all these other parts we'll talk about chromosomes and chromatin we'll talk about that when we get to DNA and genetics um, however you do need to know the nucleolus all right, the nucleolus is the dark spot that's found inside the nucleus and this makes a structure called the ribosomes all right, so ribosomes are a really important structure um, and we will talk about those later on in this video but just know that the nucleolus um, is what makes the ribosomes so ribosomes are made there and then they move out through nuclear pores all right and the nucleolus is also found in both plant and animal cells and I said that for nucleus already all right so centrioles so chromosomes are basically what help make us us all right chromosomes look like little X's and we'll talk about this in more detail and then your DNA is actually coiled around a chromosome okay it splits in half half goes this way half goes this way and you get half of this chromosome from one parent and then half of it from the other so that's how the DNA mixes so anyway the centrioles are found only in animal cells and they help these chromosomes separate during cell division so when the cells divide and they multiply alright the chromosomes have to double up so all the DNA goes into um, each new cell so it gets a full thing that's a process called mitosis and we will talk about that later on this unit as well but know that centrioles are only found in animal cells and they help the chromosomes which are these split during cell division alright next up we have the lysosome alright for those of you that played uh, the cell game um, we'll play it again on Monday but if you haven't if you had a chance to play you'll notice that uh, something was chasing your spaceship around the whole time that was the lysosome so the lysosome basically just breaks down and eliminates waste okay uh, it helps keep the cell clean so how I remember this is you have the lysosome and I liken that to Lysol and Lysol helps you clean things right so it's a disinfectant alright so I just think of lysosome Lysol clean all right, that's the job of the lysosome. They'll move around the cell. They'll get rid of dead virus. They'll get rid of other viruses. They'll get rid of waste. They'll just get rid of it, eliminate it, and make the cell more healthy. All right. Okay, so next up we have the endoplasmic reticulum. Um, we'll shorten it to ER for short. Um, the ER is your transport system of the cell. Okay, so it's kind of like the highway. A lot of the um, materials move back and forth um, along the endoplasmic reticulum that's how it gets around the cell you have two main types of ER you have rough ER and smooth ER they're both a transport system the only difference is that the rough ER has these black dots which are the ribosomes that are made in the nucleolus All right, they come out of the nucleolus and you'll find them on the endoplasmic reticulum and you'll also find them free floating in the cytoplasm All right, ribosomes are pretty much everywhere because like I said those proteins are really important um, you also have a smooth ER, which looks exactly the same, but there's no ribosomes on it. Okay, so it has the same function though. All right, so they're both a transport system. The difference is the rough ER has the ribosomes on it. The smooth ER doesn't have ribosomes on it, and these are found in both plant and animal cells. And I think I forgot that on lysosomes. Lysosomes are also found in both plant and animal cells. Sorry about that. All right, so rough ER, smooth ER. All right, moving on. Next, we have the Golgi body. Okay, you may see this written as the Golgi apparatus. All right, but they're the same thing, Golgi body, Golgi apparatus, no difference. A guy named Golgi was uh, the one who discovered it. That's why it's called the Golgi body. You always see Golgi capitalized. Uh, the Golgi body is the distribution and shipping department of the cell. So what that means is any proteins or any products that are created in the cell, it goes to the Golgi body to kind of get modified and reshaped and get ready to be sent out onto the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so it's kind of like the, uh, you can kind of liken this to the post office. Okay, it's going to receive like mail, it's going to package it up, distribute it, and get it ready for distribution 
to go out into the mail. So it's kind of like the post office, all right, if you want to liken it to something a little more familiar to you, okay? What will happen is it'll, poke, it'll package it up, it'll form it and put it into a vesicle, and then the vesicle will um, go out into the endoplasmic reticulum and um, transport whatever the um, molecule is to where it needs to go, all right? Next we have, ooh, let me go back. All right, Golgi bodies are found in both plant and animal cells. All right, so large vacuole. We have a uh, large vacuole that stores water and provides support for the cell. So large vacuole really um, expands when it's full of water, helps give it support. So these are found only in plant cells, okay? Animal cells have small vacuoles, all right? But um, the large vacuole is only found in plant cells. All right, and this fills up with water and it gives it support and it helps keep everything um, in the cell supported. So again, the plant um, stands up. All right, mitochondria is really important. All right, this is what the mitochondria looks like. It provides energy. So this is the powerhouse of the cell. Okay, it's going to produce something called ATP, and we will talk about ATP. And this is also where um, cell respiration takes place. All right, cell respiration is the making of energy. And we'll talk about cell respiration as well. But the mitochondria is really important. That's where all the energy comes from. All right, so the ribosomes, these make proteins. All right, that's all they do. That's their job. They make proteins. Proteins are really important molecules in your body. You need proteins to do a lot of different things. All right, they help fight illness. They help break down things. Um, they help speed up chemical reactions in your body, like digestion. So proteins are really important. You find ribosomes in the cytoplasm and in the uh, and along the endoplasmic reticulum. They are found in both plant and animal cells. And while I'm at it, the mitochondria is found in both plant and animal cells as well. All right. So ribosomes make proteins, and DNA actually has all the instructions for making all these different proteins, and we'll talk about that again when we get to genetics and DNA. All right, chloroplasts. These guys are only found in plant cells. Chloroplasts is where photosynthesis takes place. All right, chloroplasts absorb sunlight, um, and they convert sunlight, water, and sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide and they create glucose all right glucose is another sugar and this is the food for the plant okay so this is where all that takes place so the chloroplast perform photosynthesis it absorbs sunlight carbon dioxide and water and it makes glucose and oxygen all right and we'll talk about photosynthesis a little bit more in detail but know that the chloroplasts are found in plants and that's where photosynthesis takes place all right, then your last two are the cilia and the flagella. All right, these are usually found only in single-celled in single-celled eukaryotes. Okay, so these are fully functioning, independent, single-celled organisms. All right, and they're eukaryotic. All right, these guys are called protists. All right, again, we'll look at protists later on in the unit as well. But those are single-celled organisms, all right? Cilia are just short hair-like projections, all right? They help with movement. And then flagella is this long whip-like structure, okay? So it basically looks like a tail. All right, both are used for movement, and that's how these single-celled protists get around since most protists live in the water. Um, so the ones that move, they either have cilia or flagella. All right, so that concludes all the different organelles you guys will be responsible for knowing. Um, make sure you study these over. You will have to know how to say them, spell them, so watch this again to get the proper pronunciation. We have two big projects um, to kind of culminate like all the different stuff about cells starting next week, so make sure you get some materials. Look at the paper I gave you with the rubric. And I hope you all have a great weekend, and I will see you all on Monday. All right. Have a good one. Bye.